What could lead a genuinely good person to committing crimes against mankind? Is maintaining the status quo and fulfilling your duty worth stifling the protests of your countrymen? And should this lead to the death of these protesters, whether intentionally or not, what would this do to your mental state? Well, to get the answers to these questions, we must first start in a very unlikely place, and that's... That's a flea circus. After we are able to finally get the astrolathe back in working order in Psychonauts 2 and reunite the Psychic Six, Raz and Ford are able to enter the mind of Nona Aquato, or L Lucretia Aquato. And of course, before we enter her mind, we're greeted by the standard video game prompt that lets you know that once you enter this mind, there may be no turning back, so we'd better be prepared, priming us for the final level of the game, the big battle against Maligula herself. Or at least that's what the game wants you to think. And so I'm sure many of us were primed and ready to dive into a dark and dangerous mind more akin to what we see later in the game, which we will definitely be discussing in due time. But instead, we're greeted by a briefcase that contains a flea circus, which Ford explains is a mental construct that he had created in Lucretia's mind in order to prevent her from discovering the truth about her identity. Now, if you're not familiar with what a construct is in psychology, the American Psychological Association defines it as being a complex idea or concept formed from a synthesis of simpler ideas. Now this is interesting because I think it's safe to say that the already existing Aquato family circus was the inspiration for this mental construction that Ford had, for all intents and purposes, trapped Lucy within. Because prior to his ethically ambiguous choice to bring Augustus and Lucretia together as mother and son, as they were all that each other had left, this led her to keep the Aquato family circus going in her brother-in-law Lazarus and her sister Morona's stead. Essentially, this scenario feels like it takes the idea of running away with the circus as a means to escape to a whole new level. And while we don't actually see him do this, I have to imagine that Ford altered and curated Lucretia's mental connections in a way that made this construction form, just like at the beginning of the game when we saw Raz wreak havoc in Hollis Forsyth's mind, after having very little idea on what he was actually doing. So it makes a lot of sense that Ford could take this exact same idea and create this construct with much more intentionality. And what makes this even more fascinating is that Within this construct, we can see Ford has implanted himself as the ringmaster, who's running the show with everyone, barring Lucretia herself, being represented by masked fleas. And if we're honest with ourselves, it's this show-don't-tell kind of storytelling that the developers over at Double Fine excel at so tremendously. So what if you had the knowledge and experience to create your own video games and turn it into an actual career with opportunities for growth? If that sounds exciting, then let me tell you about Southern New Hampshire University who's sponsoring this video. SNHU is one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the country. And more specifically, I want to talk to you about their game development program. In this program, you'll have the opportunity to learn how to create realistic, dynamic gameplay experiences with game AI, game physics, 2D and 3D graphics, and interface design. You can learn 3D modeling and texturing with game art software, and that's not even mentioning computer computer programming languages like C++, C Sharp, and Java. Because courses at SNHU are taught by faculty with real-world experience, you will learn how to research, develop, and contribute to advances and trends in the field of game programming. SNHU is super affordable, with their online tuition rates being some of the lowest in the nation. So go to snhu.edu slash thoughtbubble, which is linked in the description down below, to see what the current average salary for a programmer is, and we'll request more information about the program. When you request information, a real person will hop on a call and discuss how the program can benefit you personally. It only takes one click to find your calling, but for now, I think it's time to return to check out what's going on with this circus in Lucretia's mind. Now, I'll be honest, before working on this video, I didn't know a whole lot about flea circuses and how they operate, because like, well, 
why would I? <laughs> but as I started to read up on how they actually work in real life, it made more and more sense regarding why this specifically was chosen by Double Fine as the construct that would be placed in Lucretia's mind by Ford. While we don't need to get into the nitty gritty logistics of this near extinct circus sideshow, what I think is worth mentioning is that fleas can't be trained. Instead, their trainers, if you even want to call them that, would use thin gold wire or thread to control the fleas' behavior. Then, the trainers can hitch their fleas to a variety of contraptions to make it appear as though they're performing on their own to the untrained eye. And while in the real world, it's clear that Ford wasn't pulling any strings within the Aquato family circus itself, as we mentioned, he had implanted a flea construct of himself to act as the ringmaster of this itchy construct within Lucy's mind so that he could keep some semblance of control over this construct while he personally couldn't monitor Lucy. In essence, what Ford had created for her was a perfect disguise as the matriarch of the flying Aquados while establishing this idyllic family life that he had woven together for her. And because there is certainly a lot of chaos in a circus, it works for Lucy. But as we explore the mine and help all of Raz's flea family members, if we go back to Lucy, she'll say it's one less thing to worry about, all the way up until everything is resolved and she wants us to do the high dive. And it's here that she says this. Not the most functional family, <laughs> but at least they're all alive. This clip says a lot about what we will begin seeing more and more later in her mind, as this subtly illustrates to us that to some subconscious degree, she's just happy that they're still living. Unlike Lazarus and Morona, whose deaths were the final straw in creating the Maligula persona in the first place. And so, as Raz climbs this giant ladder, when paired with the Meat Circus theme that's playing throughout the entirety of this portion of Lucy's mind, it A gives awful flashbacks to the final level of the original Psychonauts as we're trying to escape the water desperately. But this time, we're not actively avoiding the water, we're actually climbing up to take a dive. Now Raz mentions the flying Aquatos have not had the high dive in years, which tells us that it was likely removed when Ford implanted a fear of water in Lucy's subconscious, which was in turn passed on to the entire rest of the family over time. However, something that Ford had not accounted for was that Lucy was able to find a hole in this construct that she could escape to, and that hole was at the bottom of the high dive. And in turn, this would set both Lucy and Raz on the path to her actual mind. So as Raz crashes through the teapot, he lands in an incredibly cozy quilted world. And this world is not only the antithesis to the circus that we were just in, but it also gives us a solid look at who Lucy truly is deep down, giving us the opportunity to look past Ford's makeshift sideshow. And the scenery here is what we can assume to be at least comparable to what she may subconsciously remember to be the Grulovian countryside, as immediately we can see part of the dam made of luggage that is holding back her Maligula persona, as well as quilted foliage that doesn't look dissimilar to the trees that are found in Ford's follicles, which is also meant to illustrate the Grulovian countryside. I think that using a quilt as the core of her mental world is the perfect way to convey to us that while Maligula does in fact still reside within her, this aspect of her personality that has been drawn out and exacerbated by the most traumatic moment of her life is not what defines her. It shows the aspects of her mental world that she has been able to quite literally handcraft ever since starting her new life as an Aquato, whether it be the beautifully crafted quilted ground and river, the knitted trees and logs, the thimbles, the pin cushions, the buttons laying all around that illustrate what have been used to craft this beautiful scenery over the course of several years. Based on what Lucy wears in the real world and 
the fact that we know that she's the one that sews up the tents, it's no surprise that her mental world is seemingly hand-stitched as she wears that quilted shawl throughout the entirety of the game over top of her stitched and patched circus clothes. And curiously, this first area, just like the flea circus, is entirely devoid of enemies. And so once we progress through this lush, sunny area, we're greeted with a quilting hoop that illustrates what appears to be a core memory of her with a young Augusta Sequato shortly after they had been paired together by Ford after the Battle of Grulovia. In essence, what this quilted portion of Lucy's mind is, is a timeline of all of her warm, happy memories that she has made over the course of these many years. And so once she and Ford blast off again, like their Team Rocket from Pokemon, this quilting hoop becomes a portal to the next segment of her mental world. And I'll be honest, if there's anything that amazes me in Psychonauts 2, it's the portals that take you from area to area because it's so easy to forget that you can go behind these portals to find collectibles in the level, and the developers make sure to hide things just out of sight in this mind in particular which is an idea that I want to come back to in a little bit. Now this segment is interesting because while on the surface it appears pretty similar on the whole to the one Raz just came from, we will see that this is the first area in Lucretia's mind that we can actually see and interact with enemies. And the enemy types that appear here are very telling, with it being regrets and censors. And this is another indicator of the fact that she is slowly returning to where her mind was prior to Ford's intervention. And so while the first area was sunny, this area is a bit shadier, almost as though the sun is starting to set as Raz moves deeper into Lucy's mind, the greens being replaced with a more twilighty yellow. And we see another core memory of her with the family she cares about so incredibly much, which opens up portal to the third and final quilted area. Now this third area is by far the most shadowed, and you'll notice that in addition to the area as a whole being filled with darker and cooler colors, as well as having some sea foam bleeding through the quilts, this shows to us that we're actually getting pretty close to the dam that Maligula is trapped behind, as we'll see a lot more of this sea foam appearing around the base to that dam. And so as we progress through this final quilted portion, we reach the final memory portal. And it's revealed to us without a shadow of a doubt that Lucretia was the mysterious stranger who sent Raz to Whispering Rock's psychic summer camp prior to the beginning of the first game, which in reality wasn't that long ago in universe because he showed promise. This is outlined in a bit more detail. However, in the memory vault that you likely collected in the first quilted area of Lucy's mind. This is where we see her subconscious mind on full display. And the subconscious mind, if you're not familiar, is the part of a person's mind that they're not fully aware of, but it can still influence their thoughts and behaviors nonetheless. We see her in this memory vault staring into the water and seeing an image of her sister Morona staring back at her, which is what prompted Lucy to take action and set in motion the events of the Psychonauts franchise up to this point. And with this revelation at hand, it makes sense why this third area was filled only with doubts. While she may not have been able to consciously understand why she was having these doubts and regrets up to this point, the fact of the matter is that they were happening and she knew she needed help somehow. Essentially, Lucy over these past several years created a quilted tunnel in her mind that brought her from the flea circus back to the dam where Maligula was hidden away and is slowly starting to seep out of. And so once we reach the dam through the final portal, it's nighttime. The astrolathe is looming in the sky and all that is left is to unlock the dam and destroy the Maligula persona that lies dormant within Lucy. Lucretia, just waiting to come out. And so as we approach the dam itself, we must first face off against every enemy type in the game. Censors, bad ideas, regrets, judges, panic attacks, enablers, bad moods, they're all present. And while we could go in depth on why each one of these enemies are in front of the dam that's associated with 
what she would likely attribute to one of the most dramatic and painful experiences of her life that caused Maligula to manifest in the first place, I feel like we're probably all on the same page here. All of these negative emotions, all of these negative experiences then pile on to Raz just like they must have piled on to Lucretia in the aftermath of this tragedy. And so once this wave of enemies has been defeated, we see that this is also where all of the emotional baggage in her mind has been all along. However, right now what I'm more interested in discussing is the placement of the emotional baggage tags that she actually needs to sort all this out. Because all of them are placed just out of reach or just out of her awareness, whether they be on top of the flea circus's briefcase, washed up on shore beside the dam, hidden behind her quilting hoop memories, or tucked away in a clearing in the woods that you need to uncover a hidden tunnel to get to. They are all positioned Again, just out of sight, further illustrating to us what she needed to actually sort out her emotional baggage. It was there. She just couldn't perceive it. And once this is all sorted out, all that there is left to do is to open the locket, keeping Maligula at bay in Lucy's mind. I think it's incredibly telling that it's a locket that was used to keep Maligula contained behind this dam of baggage because the lockets throughout history have been used to keep something precious close to the wearer's heart, oftentimes illustrating love, remembrance, or mourning. And in Lucy's case, I think it wouldn't be a stretch to say that the pair of photos of herself and her sister represent all three. But when the locket opens and the water rushes out, it's a painful reminder of what had happened to Morona. And so, we see the dam start crumbling and Maligula's giant face <laughs> begin to emerge. And then we all know what happens next. So if you want to hear about the Fatherland Follies, go check out my video on it after this, uh, because that's a whole nother can of worms. And then once we escape from Crystal Malik's mind, we are finally able to dive back in head first into the mental world of Lucy's Maligula persona. But before we're able to truly discuss this persona, we need to determine how it was created in the first place. And I think that the memory vault that we find in the Flea Circus does a great job of outlining what actually happened on that fateful day. Lucretia, who was at this time well established as the Tsar of Grulovia's Minister of War, was told for the umpteenth time to rain on the protesters who simply wanted the hyper wealthy Tsar to provide his poverty stricken citizens with more aid. And at the front line of these protests were Morona and Lazarus. They wouldn't be swayed by a little bit of rain, and so she made it rain more and more, and it rained until behind the dam there was such a buildup of water that while unintentionally, it caused the dam to burst, drowning countless protesters, including Morona and Lazarus. So upon seeing her dead sister floating in the water, this is what caused the cruel Maligula persona to manifest. Now what could cause someone like Lucretia, who by all accounts prior to this event seemed like a pretty good person to become Maligula. Well, if you recall, the Psychic Seven's whole existence was based around pushing the limits of their psychic abilities, and their use of the astrolathe is best described by Ford here. Listen, Raz, this compound, we got into some pretty far out stuff here. I've read about- The kind of stuff they don't write about in true psychic tales, okay? We all pushed each other to go farther, to broaden our consciousness, to open every closed door in our minds. It made us defenseless, psychically. But we were in a safe place here. We had each other. Then her homeland was attacked. She insisted on helping. I begged her not to go in that condition. It's so vulnerable. Ah, war brought something out in her that should have been locked away. So while this was all well and good within the confines of the Green Needle Gulch, when Lucy went off to war to defend Grilovia and her people, she was urged not to go by Ford because it was likely that the horrors of war may put a strain on her mind that was already delicate and at risk due to these experiments. But to protect her family, she felt she had to go. And while 
don't get me wrong, she was instrumental in winning the war, and this in turn lifted her into a position of authority under the Tsar. Her prolonged time in Grulovia wore on her mind. She now had to stifle protests led by her family against the Tsar, so when we enter her mind, we find ourselves frozen in the moment in time that created Maligula. We are greeted by a monument created to honor the war hero Lucretia Mux, and we are surrounded by ruins and a giant wave prepared to destroy everything in its path. We see in this area of her mind Verona and Lazarus in bed together, dead. The graves of protesters and Maligula's callous, cold, and cruel presence pervading every inch of this mental world. And while we consider the legacy of Maligula, I think it's worth mentioning another tyrant who is likely, at least in part, the namesake of Maligula, and that's the Roman Emperor Caligula, who, to keep it simple, was initially well regarded, but shortly after becoming emperor, grew dangerously ill, and once he had recovered, became a tyrant, committing cruel and unspeakable acts to a lot of the people in his kingdom. Now this doesn't add a whole lot of understanding to the character of Maligula at a surface level, and someone who is a bit more well versed in Roman history might be able to add some more context. I think it's a cool parallel either way. And so when we combine the fact that through the the Psychic Seven's experiments, Lucretia's mind became more vulnerable, add on the horrors of war, and then, just to top it all off, consider her inadvertent murder of not only her countrymen, but the sister that she very likely came to Grulovia to help protect. It's really unsurprising that Lucretia gets sent into and stuck in what the game repeatedly describes as a supercharged fight or flight response, which while I'm sure we're all somewhat familiar with what a fight or flight response is, I want to go over the American Psychological Association's definition, which is a pattern of psychological changes elicited by activity of the sympathetic nervous system in response to threatening or otherwise stressful situations that lead to mobilization of energy for physical activity, examples being attacking or avoiding the offending stimulus, either directly or by inhibiting psychological activity that does not contribute to energy mobilization. Specific sympathetic responses involved in the response include increased heart rate, respiratory rate, and sweat gland activity, elevated blood pressure, decreased digestive activity, pupil dilation, and a routing of blood flow to skeletal muscles. To put it as bluntly as possible, when Lucretia saw the corpse of her sister, it was like a cartoon when someone flips a lever and the lever breaks off. When Lucretia went on the attack, and all of this stimuli created such an incredible amount of energy within her sympathetic nervous system, Lucretia went fully into her fight response. Any checks and balances that her brain may have had to get herself back under control had been compromised by her time with the Psychic Seven. Her grief then became twisted into rage, her sadness into bloodlust, and just like her mental world, she became frozen in this moment. Not only did this change Lucretia mentally, however, but it changed her physically as well. With her skin changing, from an orangish warm tone to a more purplish hue. And perhaps this is just me taking a bit of a leap in logic, but I can't help but wonder if the devs intended for this physical change to illustrate that she had grown colder, or even that mentally she was frozen as Maligula, with the cold water surrounding her aiding in this change to give her skin this more purple look to it. Or maybe she's just caught hypothermia because of being around so much cold water. Or maybe it's all of the above. Who's to say except the developers. But when your brain has entered this fight or flight state, it's not uncommon for an individual to have an increase in rage and aggression, which again is dialed to 11 within Maligula without those checks and balances in her mind, which can be very clearly seen in this exchange between Raz and Maligula. I mean, not that I think I'm great or anything, just that you're my grandma's sister, and I'm here to talk you out of being evil because, you know, you're still family and all. Family? All I see is another unruly Grulovian peasant. 
a half Gulovian. Another little scratch, and he divorced from the streets. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> to her, she's defending her country from anyone that might threaten it. However, now everyone is an enemy in her eyes, from the Tsar, to the citizens, to anyone else that might cross her path. Everyone will meet the same fate. They will drown, just like her sister Morona. You can see that when she attacks in the boss fight, she constantly sends out serpents of suffocation, which she tells to fill Raz's lungs all the way. All the while, doubts are springing up on the battlefield around her, and while Raz may try to talk talk her down by saying that she's just a natural part of the fight or flight complex. That she should stay in the primitive brain. Obviously, Maligula doesn't seem to care too much. However, Lucretia is doing everything in her power to escape. And as the fight goes on, it becomes harder and harder for Maligula to keep Lucy at bay. And finally, after fighting off Maligula herself, doubts and bad ideas for long enough, we see her accept the fact that she is the one who killed her sister. Something that this fight or flight complex, as the game puts it, never allowed her to do. She was never able to make peace with the fact that her actions are what ended up causing her to lose her family. And while Maligula may say that she doesn't care because she's killed a lot of people, Lucretia's ready to make amends. Lucy is done running from her past, and she is ready to escape from this frozen moment in time. She's ready to escape from the worst moment of her life, and she's ready to move past the life that Ford had fabricated for her. And so she gives Raz all the power she has to send Maligula back where she belongs, into the primitive portion of her mind, just to act as a fight or flight response. Nothing more. What I love the most about Psychonauts 2 is that no one is truly irredeemable. And I think that this mind proves this fact better than any other mind in the game. While the circumstances that caused the creation of Maligula are rooted very heavily in the in-game lore, I always find storylines that address the fact that even the best people in the world are flawed and easily corruptible so fascinating. Whether it's Harvey Dent in The Dark Knight, Superman in Injustice, or Luke Lucretia Mux in Psychonauts 2, it's easy to see red and never turn back. And I think it would be fair to say that the things Lucretia did as Maligula were unforgivable to a lot of people. She destroyed homes, she took lives, and she was brutal and relentless in the process. Regardless of the circumstances that sent her down this path, which at this point we are all incredibly aware of, the question is now, should she be allowed? to start over. Can someone who has caused so much damage truly be allowed to move on even though she cut so many lives short? Or does she deserve the opportunity to atone and move forward? I don't know what the right answer is to be honest, but I will always believe that anyone can change given the proper supports and resources. And so after the events of the game, we learn from Coach Oleander that Lucretia is going to live with Ford in the Green Needle Gulch. And personally, I think that this is the right choice for everyone. And hopefully, after all these years of being trapped in a life that was not her own, even though she may have made it her own to some extent, now she can finally begin sorting through it all. And while I'm sure that the road will not be easy for her as she copes with the gravity of her actions so long ago, with the support of Ford and the rest of the Psychic Seven, the Psychonauts, and the Aquatos, I truly believe that Lucy will be able to finally come to terms with her past and put an end to the deluge for good.